We're joined now live by Ohio Senator J.D. Vance. Senator Vance, thanks so much for joining our coverage tonight. So um, we had your colleague on, Senator Tim Scott. Yeah, pretty sure I know what you're going to say, but <laughs> what, what were your thoughts on the debate? Well, two things. So first of all, an incredible contrast between the meandering, low-energy approach of Joe Biden and I think the high-energy, command-of-the-facts approach of Donald Trump. Um, I, I just think it created an incredible contrast for the American people between a guy who's had a failed presidency but also had a very bad debate versus a guy who had a successful presidency and a very successful debate. Uh, but I also, there, there's something that won't get talked about as much, but I think is really important. Um, there's, this, there's a remarkable difference in compassion shown between the two candidates. Uh, the Biden border crisis, which I think is all on Joe Biden, of course, people are going to disagree with me. Um, no real compassion shown for the people whose children have been killed by illegal aliens, for the people killed themselves. You hear Donald Trump talking about calling the mother of somebody who was killed by an illegal alien. I think that that difference is going to get lost because it was such a, a disaster for Biden. But I, I think that it Senator really Vance, highlights a yeah. significant difference I, in compassion I, I, I between you. the two candidates. I hear you. But but former President Trump also has a long history of not being compassionate. He, he didn't care for Senator John McCain being tortured in a Vietnamese prison in the Hanoi Hilton. Uh, he's had problem with Gold, Gold Star families, uh, something that happened all throughout the 2016 campaign. So, I mean, he also has a long record of, of not exactly showing compassion. I understand your point well, tonight. Any, look, anybody can point to a particular moment and say Donald Trump wasn't compassion. I'm saying in this particular debate, I think it revealed that those criticisms are very often based on a misrepresentation of who he actually is, because you see him talking about Americans affected by the policies of Joe Biden. I mean, look, whether you think the Biden presidency has been a success or a disaster, uh, I think it's been a disaster. You've got to recognize there have been people who have hurt, been hurt by those policies. It's weird to me that not once did Joe yeah. Biden say, well, you know, I could have done better or, well, yeah, I, th th I shouldn't have let that person come in and murder these innocent kids. There was no real sense of compassion from President Biden. And I think that's going to leave a mark with the electorate. Ohio used to be a swing state. Maybe it still is, but a lot of people don't consider it the battleground. It sure. used to be in, in elections past. But for swing voters that are still there, what do you think they got out of this election? If you're one of those double haters, if you're a swing voter, what substance did you get out of this, this, this debate? Well, you know, th th there were moments of substance. Obviously, there were some personal jabs back and forth, but there were moments of substance. For example, Biden accused Trump of causing high inflation. Of course, when Donald Trump left office, inflation was 1.4 percent. It skyrocketed about a year into the Biden presidency. So I think very clearly, if you're worried about the price of groceries or doubling of the price of mortgage, you have to look at that factual difference and say, well, Donald Trump was right. Inflation was low during his presidency. It, it elevated during Joe Biden's presidency. Uh, I think there was a real difference on foreign policy, right? Joe Biden kept on accusing Donald Trump of basically being friendly with the Russians, and Trump pushed back and said, well, uh, Vladimir Putin actually invaded Ukraine on your watch. He didn't take an ounce of Ukrainian territory when I was president. So but even though there, also, were, yeah, there were some personal it. jabs, I actually think there was more substance than maybe a lot of the press will give I credit. I get it, but also former President Trump also seemed to allude to the fact that Joe Biden was president during the George Floyd protest. It was incredibly confusing. He seemed to kind of lose like track of the timeline of when he was president no, during I, those protests, I, I, and, and it was a little confusing. So th th those those were the times. But I, but I'm asking I, you're I a think, swing I, voter. I think there were two, yeah. I think there were two two points that Trump was making there. First of all, it, it was a lot of Democratic policies, mayoral policies, the attack on police that happened yes during his administration, but by Democratic mayors that led to the spike in crime after the George Floyd uh, death. But the second point he was making pretty pretty directly, I think, is look, you guys went after a a lot of, of, you know, peaceful protesters in the aftermath of uh, the election of 2020, but you let all of these people off completely scot-free, even though they were burning down American cities. I think what Trump was really highlighting was the two-tiered system of justice that Joe Biden has allowed in this country. Do you think there'll be a second debate, and, and do you think President Trump will, former President Trump will agree to it? Oh, look, I hope there will be a second debate, because, look, the American people deserve it. And I do think that whether you like Donald Trump or like Joe Biden, this was an important concept contrast for the American people to see. I think that, you know, look, I hear a lot of Democratic politicians behind us. They're spinning this thing. Democrats recognize this was a disaster. So I think there will be pressure on Joe Biden not to debate again. I think that would be a mistake and it would be a real disservice to the American people. Do you think voters who had concerns about Trump's temperament were reassured in this debate? And I ask that because it seemed that sure. when, when, when President Biden had those personal attacks about porn stars, about convictions, it seemed to really rattle him and get him sort of to lose his cool. And to your point earlier, you were saying how Trump was compassionate and he was talking about calling uh, the families of, of victims of, of murders. 
but he still seemed to lose his cool. Does, does, and you know President Trump so well. Does he still lose his cool? Does he still have a temperament issue? No, look, I, I, don't, I didn't see him losing his cool. What I saw him is getting a little fired up, right? When somebody accuses you, in my view, slanders you of yeah. criticizing America's troops, and I know that Donald Trump didn't say that, of course he's going to get fired up and push back, but he didn't lose his temper. I think he showed a proper amount of human emotion in pushing back against it, returning to his points that he wanted to make for the American people. I think if you watch this Donald Trump, you say to yourself, yeah, this is a guy who sometimes feels things, as yeah. any human being would do when you're slandered by somebody else, but I don't think he lost his cool once. Uh, I want to ask you about the, the VP stakes. Uh, this almost feels like, like a new version of The Apprentice, right? You, Senator Rubio, Governor Burgum, Senator Tim Scott, you guys are all flying around, following uh, former President Trump. It, it almost feels like an audition. How does it feel for you? I mean, you're a United States senator. You're representing the, the great people of Ohio. Sure. And you're, you're part of Team Trump. You're on this campaign trail. I, where, where do you stand on that? Are, are you enjoying this process? You know, look, I'm having a great time. Let me say two things. First of all, the best way, I think, for uh, me to serve the people of Ohio is to continue to be a great United States senator, but to advocate for a president who's going to put their interests first, close the border, and bring down inflation. That's why it's so important for me to be out here advocating for President Trump. Whatever happens, second point, whatever happens in the Veep stakes, uh, the Senate's in recess, and the best thing that I can do right now when the Senate's in recess, I think, is to make as effective of an argument as I can during the heat of this campaign season, which is what we're in, that we need to elect better people in Washington yes. because I want the people of Ohio to have better lives. They're not going to have those better lives if we continue to have corrupt, ineffective government. The Wall Street Journal, a conservative editorial page, as you know, um, had an editorial out, and they endorsed Governor Doug Burgum to be the running mate. In it, they write this, and this is a tough question, but I want to get your Please. feedback. I'm sure you read it. Uh, Mr. Vance and Rubio bring much less to the ticket. Mr. Vance is a young man in a seeming hurry to be Don Jr., though that rule's already taken. He won't draw independents or doubting Republicans. And on foreign policy, Mr. Vance was a political opportunist in opposing military aid to Ukraine. What do you say to the Wall Street Journal's editorial page? Well, first of all, I wouldn't say the Wall Street Journal is necessarily conservative. I think that they're obsessed with causing a war in every corner of the world. Their editorial page at least is. And it wasn't political opportunism for me to say that Joe Biden's Ukraine policy was a disaster. In fact, when I took that position, uh, that was a political minority position. Now, of course, the American people have come around to my view because they recognize that writing limitless checks to a war that effectively has no end with a real risk of escalation is not in the best interest of the American people. So what I think we need, young or old, is statesmen in positions of leadership who are de-escalating the world's conflicts, who are bringing about peace and prosperity in this country and around the world. Uh, that's why I'm supporting Donald Trump. And whoever he picks for vice president, he's the guy at the top of the ticket, and he's the guy that we need to govern this country more effectively. Has he asked you to join his ticket? He has not asked me. All right. Thank you. Senator Vance, thank you for your time and for your honesty. I appreciate Thanks. it. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.